significant uh, event and also uh, very honored to be joined by, by you and also Pidas Chung and Bachelor Quinones. And uh, happy first day of work. Mr. Recording Quinones. has started. Okay. Um, but uh, as you mentioned, I think you, you took uh, a lot of my words out, out of my mouth already by, by, by your introduction. But Taiwan, we uh, in this pandemic, uh, we still call it. Many of us call it the uh, Wuhan pneumonia here. But uh, we we took early actions uh, as soon as we knew something was not right and something was happening in Wuhan back in uh, late December. As as you many of you may have uh, no, learned, uh, on December 31st, we sent an email to the World Health Organization asking for details about this. This uh, a strange happening in this a, a typical case of pneumonia that 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 uh, the patients were being uh, uh, separated uh, and we got no response. But we decided that uh, we had to act even before uh, uh, the World Health Organization made any any comments on on it. So we took early action and and, and you know by the things that you mentioned, your technology, openness, transparency. We had uh, every single day our CECC. Central Epidemic uh, Command uh, had uh, news news uh, <coughs> news events uh, chaired by our, our own Ministry of Health to tell the whole world and our people what was going on that day in Taiwan regarding the pandemic, how the government was dealing with it, how many cases. As a matter of fact, I, I can uh, share with you, as of today, we have 445 confirmed cases in Taiwan. Uh, with uh, we just had two today, two two travelers from uh, Bangladesh who arrived. They arrived with symptoms of uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, we've only had seven deaths so far, and but also uh, already 433 of those 445 have been recovered and released uh, from 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 the epidemic. So, but also to a certain extent, we were lucky because many factors could have could have played, and we could have ended up with the, with the, with with a disaster in our hands, but we took early actions because of our experiences from 2003 from the SARS epidemic. Uh, we didn't know that we had an epidemic in our hands until it, it already happened, and that because PRC, People's Republic of China, had uh, not told the world what was happening in their own in their own country. So by the way, by the time it was it spread through Hong Kong to to the rest of the to to to, the, to Southeast Asia, including Taiwan, uh, we had over 150,000 uh, cases of people quarantined and 37 deaths. That experience told us that um, we could not rely on PRC, but also we could not rely. We needed to be integrated in, in, into the World Health Organization. At that at that time, 2003, we asked for help. To the WHO, and they refused to 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 react to our pleas until maybe six weeks after. Even after they after six weeks, they sent specialists to Taiwan. They refused to have contacts with our health ministry officials because of the you know uh, the the one China policy that rules in WHO. So many deaths could have been prevented in 2003. So during the last 17 years. We have been preparing for the next pan pandemia, which is the one we are facing today. So, uh, in, in the short, you know, as in, 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 as a whole, we were sort of prepared. We were been preparing for this for 17 years, and we had to rely on ourselves to to deal with this project, uh, with this pandemic. But also, it shows that we should uh, be more integrated with to the world health system because we are part of this world. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Quinones, welcome to Washington. Uh, so glad you, you're being entrusted with this important role representing Guatemala and to the United States. Ambassador Quinones, tell us a little bit about how Guatemala is experiencing COVID and how is Guatemala responding? Uh, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, first, let me thank you for this invitation. As uh, as you just indicated, I'm just uh, arriving into uh, Washington. This is my first official uh, event, and I'm very pleased that it's uh, with CSIS and with you. And and also, I'm very honored to be uh, joining this conversation uh, with Ambassador Yu, uh, Yui and and also with Miss uh, with Miss Chung. Uh, to talk about this very important uh, situation, um, 
and and in certain uh, way this this terrible uh, a very complicated uh, uh, issue as in many other countries uh, um Guatemala has also suffered uh, uh, with uh, COVID-19, uh, both in issues of health and, and, and the economy. Uh, but we, since very early on, uh, we recognized the, the challenge that this uh, presented and we adopted a series of measures to contain and mitigate the impact that we knew that, uh, that uh, uh, the coronavirus was going to have, um, especially on the vulnerable groups. Um, the, the government issue measures that uh, um, uh, face masks, masks should be used, uh, curfews were uh, imposed, uh, um, also flights uh, were canceled uh, coming uh, into Guatemala and uh, border clos uh, uh, border lines were, were also closed. Uh, President Yamate, who, who by the way, and I don't know if you know this, he's a medical doctor, uh, mm. wanted to shield the country as much as possible. Uh, knowing that a country like ours with uh, very limited health coverage and a very large portion of our economy uh, being informal, it's about uh, 75% of, of, of the economy is informal, the impact uh, could have been uh, catastrophic. Obviously, the pandemic has affected the economy, uh, but Guatemala is a resilient country. Uh, we have very strong economic and, and financial uh, fundamental solid macroeconomic indicators and a very low ratio between debt and, and GDP. Uh, as a matter of fact, just recently the, the, the IMF approved a, a assistance package uh, almost worth $600 million uh, to Guatemala and they would have not done so if we uh, were not uh, uh, well prepared to, uh, to manage it. Um, in order to mitigate this, this challenges, uh, uh, the administration of President Yamate uh, also adopted a series of, of, of measures to help the people. Uh, we worked with the financial authorities to decrease the interest rates. We also um, uh, uh, had emergency subsidies uh, to the poor, including cash transfers, uh, uh, energy subsidy, uh, food provisions, uh, loans to uh, micro and, and SMEs, uh, unemployment subsidies, uh, uh, and also that's on the economic part and, and on the health uh, uh, part. Uh, five new hospital, temporary hospitals will, were built and more health uh, workers were, were, were hired. This is just to name a few of the issues that we, that we worked on. Um, and I just want to close uh, by quoting uh, what the IMF said. Uh, when approving this uh, um, this assistance package uh, to Guatemala, which in a way sums very well what we have been trying uh, trying to do, and and I quote: uh, the Guatemalan authorities have taken swift and comprehensive measures to contain the spread of the virus and mitigate its economic impact, and and that is the way that 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 we are trying to approach this situation. Great, thanks, Ambassador. Pete S. Chung, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate your time. Great. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all for this esteemed panel. Thank you for having me here today. I'm very happy to, um, to be here and with these wonderful guests and talk about the important issues facing the hemisphere. Uh, as you may already know, since the outbreak of COVID-19, the United States government alone has allocated more than $10 billion in financial humanitarian, technical, and scientific support to combat the crisis. And of that, a billion is just in state and USAID uh, funding alone. Um, but as we talk about the various uh, PPE and other donations, including that from our Southcom uh, friends as well to the region, and a lot of it, 112 million was just in the Western Hemisphere in terms of our assistance. Um, but beyond equipment and donations, that those are the immediate needs of the crisis that we are facing right now. I think we're also looking at the medium and longer challenges, the technical capacity, the medical health capacity, uh, the assistance we provide through our Centers for, for Disease Control, and then how to rebuild economies and attract foreign investment back after this pandemic is over, or you know, there's a hard, uh, hard to say what difficult um, exact date that date will be, but as we continue to transition through this pandemic, how can we strengthen communities and economies more than ever? And that is a real focus as we look at this. And we can't do this alone just by U.S. government assistance. We have to look at the private sector, charities, 
NGOs. It's a whole of government, whole of U.S. effort that we are committed to. So we see many of our U.S. companies involved in providing assistance in whatever way, and including in Facebook, they're providing technical assistance in countries through chatbots to filter emergency calls. We have companies that are converted their factories now into making PPEs and masks when they normally have not been doing that. So as we look to more the medium and long-term challenges, um, how do we think about that financing? How do we think about the Development Finance Corporation? Um, DFC just announced on June 3rd that they would be providing $200 million in lending to Banco Industrial in Guatemala to provide a support for loans for small and medium enterprises. And 30% will be going to women-owned uh, small businesses. So as we move through this challenge, how do we build that, rebuild that economy and capacity together? And then finally, on the point of our good, very good friends, our reliable democratic partners of Taiwan, as we have seen, Taiwan has been a model in how to address quickly and with transparency uh, this issue as it came up. And we strongly uh, really welcome Taiwan's participation in whatever regional and global forum there are to enhance our, our ability to have these discussions. But the fact that the Taiwan was not welcome in the recent World Health Assembly, it was quite a disappointment. And we know that um, China and Beijing's uh, Chinese Communist Party had pressured the WHO to uh, not allow Taiwan to participate. So again, we call for more space, more of that international space for a reliable uh, and trusted partner like Taiwan to be able to share its best practices, to share its leadership where it's needed. This is a time when we all come together and, and not leave countries out as we talk about how to address solutions together. And I know uh, we do a lot with Taiwan in the Indo-Pacific, and I look forward to doing more cooperation and capacity building with Taiwan in, in our hemisphere as well. I know that there is many various um, avenues of doing that in Asia, for instance, through the Global Cooperation Training Framework, and I'm hoping that we are able to bring that and those resources here to our region as well, whether it's in the health and medical field or digital economy or other enterprise and entrepreneurship issues. Uh, we believe Taiwan is a very strong partner for this region. Thank, thank you, Pete S. Chung. That's really great. I, I strongly agree with all of your points. I think it, Taiwan is a reliable partner. It is, and it's an important, uh, it's an important partner, especially in, in Central America as well. So, Ambassador, we talk a little bit about how Taiwan, in addition to its successful response to COVID in its, in Taiwan, how it's helping allies in places such as Central America. Talk a little bit about that, Ambassador. Thank you, Daniel. Um, as soon as we started dealing with the, the pandemic here in, here in Taiwan, we also started thinking about how to help our friends. We have Latin America and the Caribbean. We have uh, seven uh, health programs uh, uh, in seven countries going on, and we immediately asked our, our technicians or doctors who were in those countries stationed to, to uh, implement those those uh, projects, health projects, to start giving seminars uh, to the health personnel in those countries regarding the pandemic. At that time, early on, it was maybe Feb early February, uh, most people around the world thought that this was an Asia-only epidemic. So people said, ah, well, it's still far away, you know, but, but we started teaching, or well, we're not teaching, sharing with them our experiences, our our, our uh, uh, advice on how to deal with this if it came to to these countries. So, uh, in some instances, in most instances, I think uh, the health ministries of these allied countries would already somewhat had a, a notion of what to do or what what how it when it came, how they can prepare for it. We also, as soon as we were able to. Uh, for example, also in Taiwan, um, in January, people started to notice that face masks were not really readily available as they used to be at pharmacies or so even supermarkets. We can buy this very cheap, you know, at the supermarket. But they started to disappear. People started hoarding these these face masks. So we we created a national team to to create face masks uh, for the, for Taiwan, the Taiwanese people. Uh, we. Re, 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 uh, 
started having r rations. Uh, we could, I think, get three per week at the, at, at the beginning, and then we can now we can get nine per two weeks for per 14 days. And now it's readily available everywhere. But we, uh, we, the government took command of the production of face masks so that it could uh, satisfy our domestic production, but at the same time uh, also prepare for to share with uh, our, our friends around the world, and not only Latin America, but U.S. and other, other countries where, where there was a need. Uh, for example, in face masks, we've donated or sent to Latin America the total of around 14 million uh, face masks. Uh, and, and, and N95 masks, around 200,000. We also donated PPEs, uh, thermal imaging cameras, uh, uh, temperature measuring stations, PCR machines, etc. cetera, uh, all to, to help our friends uh, in need uh, facing uh, these, this pandemic. We also offer some uh, financial non-reimbursable assistance to other countries as soon as we knew that this has, is, was becoming a, a, a serious problem in, in the area. Uh, also, as uh, Pidesh Chung has mentioned, which I, uh, you know, I, I, I like the way you, you guys work. You're already thinking about post-pandemic, you know, uh, world. What to do afterwards? We're also uh, thinking about what to do, planning what to do with our uh, with our ally uh, uh, countries after this stage is over, the recovery stage. What we can do with 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 our, our friends to to help them in the economic recovery, we, uh, in for example, in, in the Caribbean, uh, allies of Saint Lucia, Saint Vincent, Grenadines, Saint Kitts, and Belize, uh, they are heavily reliant on the, on the tourism industry. So we are already planning uh, on a project afterwards, uh, a pro post post uh, pandemic, on how to to help them in the recovery of the uh, of the tourism industry. But adding the safeguards, the necessary safeguards to to prevent this from happening, or to 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 to, to make the tourists feel safe, but when they're visiting uh, these countries, and also we have other projects. Uh, we, I think we talked to uh, uh, Pires Chang before. We are also uh, planning on this uh, on the recovery, economic recovery stage, on a project related to to uh, women entrepreneurs uh, in in our allied countries, etc. So. So these are the, and also we've been sending, uh, 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 Taiwan is a rice production country, so we've been sending uh, uh, quite a lot of rice to our, our allies. For Guatemala, we, we're sending around 3,000 tons of rice to 80, around 10,000, etc., to other countries as well, uh, to ha also help them uh, face with 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 this uh, with this uh, crisis. But. Uh, uh, and also, uh, as uh, Peter Chan also mentioned, the GCTF uh, events. It's it's a training seminar, and I think we talked about that we also uh, could uh, start our very first event in Latin America, uh, maybe on digital economy, maybe on health, and we talked about maybe doing it, you know, initiated in in Guatemala. So we are also uh, planning on that. Excellent. Thanks, Ambassador Lee. Ambassador Quinones, talk a little bit about um, how you're working with Taiwan and the United States and how they're helping you respond to COVID. And talk also a little bit about, as you look ahead beyond the immediate emergency that Pete S. Chung is talking about, what, what the future looks like. Go ahead, Ambassador. Uh, thank you, Dan, and, 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 and thank you to uh, Ambassador Yui for uh, for what they're doing, for what Taiwan is doing uh uh, with Guatemala and for Guatemala. Uh, Taiwan has been an excellent friend. Uh, and uh, in this pandemic, uh, they have shown what really friends are for. Uh, they have been extremely supportive. They, they, they have been very, very strong partner uh, in the fight that we are facing uh, to mitigate the, the, the pandemic. Um, they have provided very important uh, support, uh, medical equipment in very large quantities. Uh, uh, he mentioned uh, the surgical masks. Well, we benefited from two million of those surgical masks. Uh, also, the, uh, the the thermal cameras, uh, uh, a good number of them were also uh, provided to Guatemala. Uh, infrared thermometers, uh, more than 1,500 of them. Uh, we received from uh, for, from Taiwan uh, detector systems, uh, um, a, a, a great number of of, of issues that uh, and, uh, items that uh, allows us to to face this uh, 
uh, this, this, this pandemic. But additionally to that, uh, uh, they also thought about food and, and, and they were very generous on, on the rice as, as Ambassador, uh, you uh, mentioned, but also, uh, they provided more than a hundred thousand, uh, instant soups. Uh, so, so they have been very, very generous, but not just in terms of, 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 of items, but also in sharing, uh, their experience, uh, uh, they have uh, best practices on on dealing with this uh, uh, situation. We we heard at the beginning uh, the great numbers uh, that uh, Taiwan uh, has been able to, uh, how how Taiwan has been able to manage the situation and and the low numbers of of, of people uh, infected and, and and diseased from this uh, uh, from this pandemic. Uh, comparing it with other countries, uh, uh, Taiwan has done a marvelous job in in. In, in, in doing so, and 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 not just in this case, but also as Ambassador Yu was was indicating, they also uh, uh, were very very um, successful in in dealing with the SARS epidemic. I know that also they were very successful in the avian flu uh, flu and the H one N one, and and it is really impressive what what Taiwan has been able to achieve in the in, in the health uh, sector, and and it really merits um, uh, to be more widely known um, uh, so other countries can also benefit uh, from from that experience and and that is why Guatemala presented a request to the uh, World Health Organization for Taiwan participation as an observer uh, at the World Health Assembly uh, this this year. Uh, well, we have done it in the past uh, uh, repeatedly, uh, but unfortunately without uh, success. And this this has been very very unfortunate because many many countries could have benefited from Taiwan's uh, uh, experience. Um, the United States have also has also helped. Uh, uh, Guatemala in, in addressing this, uh, uh, this, this, this pandemic. Um, uh, they have supported on, uh, with, with, uh, equipment and, 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 and other, uh, financial, financial support. And, um, uh, P.S. Chung mentioned one very important element, uh, which is not just focusing on what is going on right now, which is very, very important. And, and we cannot neglect that part, but I think it's very important also to look uh, 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 to the day after and, and, and working towards, uh, getting the economy back, uh, in its foot. And, and, uh, uh, there, uh, uh this, uh, uh, facilities like, like the, uh, um, DFC, Development Finance Corporation, uh, have, uh, have a tremendous, uh, um, possibilities of, of, of helping the country and helping the private sector, which is the one that drives the, 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 the economy. Um, I want to publicly, uh, Thank the the DFC uh, for for having approved this this uh, uh, contribution to Banco Industrial in, in Guatemala on, on 200 million. Uh, uh, there are others in the pipeline, uh, and and we are hoping to continue uh, having this 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 engagement uh, 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 on the health issues right now, but also uh, uh, on future um, uh, possibilities to get the, the economy back in, in, in track. In closing, then I I, I just want to recognize uh, uh, Taiwan's success on in dealing with this uh, uh, terrible uh, situation and uh, and uh, um, our regret that uh, the World Health Organization uh, was not um, welcoming uh, uh, Taiwan and 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 also I want to thank uh, the the support that we have uh, the very general support that we have received uh, uh, from Taiwan. Ambassador Quinones, I want you to, I'm going to ask you to think about this question. I'm going to turn to Pete S. Chung after this. We're going to have a, a change in leadership at the Inter-American Development Bank in October 1. And so, uh, governments have to put forward their, their candidates sometime in the next, you know, it, I think they starts at the end of July. Right. Uh, it seems to me we're going to want to have, you don't have to answer this now. I'm going to turn to Pete S. Chung, but have a think on this. It seems to me we're going to want somebody who knows Central America, Knows how to restart economies, to P. Das Chung's point earlier. Uh, and I think also as somebody who also has got a clear, ideally has a clear eye view about what an excellent contributor Taiwan could be to the, uh, to, to the region. Uh, Taiwan's an observer to the Inter-American Development Bank, if I recall correctly, Ambassador Yui. So have a think on that, Ambassador Quinones. I'll leave that question for you, but let me turn to you, P. Das Chung. Uh, you mentioned earlier this, 
a very important global cooperation and training for, framework, which is the United States, Taiwan, and Japan Exchange Association that jointly administer this platform for Taiwan to share its expertise. I, I thought that was a really important thing that you flagged. Either talk a little bit about that. Maybe there's an opportunity to start in Guatemala, as you were saying earlier. Exactly. There's so much, again, that we have done with Taiwan in the Indo-Pacific. And again, um, I think our Western Hemisphere uh, has so many challenges, but opportunities too. And that's where we're really looking to cement those partnerships and cooperation even more than ever. And we thought this GCTF framework has been so successful in Asia. And I previously, I worked in Southeast Asia as well and saw how the capacity building at the technical level, at the policymaker level, was able to help people, whether we were talking about infectious disease issue, issues or water issues, uh, so many of the challenges that, for instance, the Caribbean ish, um, areas share with the Pacific Islands is disaster resilience. We're going into hurricane season now. So it just was a natural partnership for the United States and Taiwan to work in Asia. And we're building up that capacity and programming here in this um, this region as well. And I'll see another opportunity is for the America Clase initiative, which we announced last year, is to really look at, again, the capacity building and the institution building to enable foreign investments to come into the countries in the Western Hemisphere. And we have signed MOUs now with the, uh, more than a dozen countries in the Western Hemisphere. We would like to do one with Guatemala and others as well. And what this enables is bringing in USCID and, and uh, all of our inner agencies, commerce, treasury, to provide the training and frameworks. Again, we are not we can't order our companies, unlike no. other countries, to go invest in a country. But if we provide the capacity and the enabling environment, uh, reduce the, um, the, the, the bureaucratic hurdles to investment, we believe that will attract U.S. and other foreign investors. So this is another area we can, we can partner with Taiwan in. And um, I think Taiwan has a real specialty in the innovation sectors. Again, not just digital economy, but the IT and even the tourism where you need really um, sophisticated infrastructures. These are the areas that the, in the sectors that the Western Hemisphere mm -hmm. countries are looking for. And when you talk about innovation, transparency and good governance, that is what we have in our reliable mm -hmm. partner as Taiwan. So, Excellent. you know, I would say finally that uh, as we talk about excuse me, transparency issues, uh, we have to look at those countries that have uh, approached the COVID crisis in the most transparent and open way and those countries that haven't. And if you have not been uh, sharing information like Beijing hasn't and uh, been hiding information and delaying and cracking down on its own journalists reporting on COVID, I think that speaks volumes to other areas. Again, this is not just about COVID. It's about the next pandemic but it's about everything that we do together. And so finding the partners that we share the same democratic and open values, it's very important, no matter uh, we're talking about pandemics or economic rebuilding. Thank you, Pete S. Chung. I think it's very important that you mention this. There is going to be another pandemic. This, they they con unfortunately come like clockwork because of air travel, because of agriculture, because of urbanization. We're going to have this as a challenge. This is one of the, the downsides of, of we, even without extensive globalization, we've had pandemics and other times in history, but they're just going to come. And so we have to have resiliency. We have to have strong institutions. It helps if you've got a free media. It helps if you've got a strong scientific uh, set of capacities. And it, it helps to work together in a collaborative and open way. And Taiwan's demonstrated that. The United States demonstrating that. Guatemala's demonstrating that. And I really appreciate you mentioning, I think there's an enormous opportunity through GCTF. I think Taiwan has a lot to share with the region. We can do this in partnership with Taiwan as the United States in, in countries like Guatemala. CSIS would love to work with uh, Taiwan and helping be a catalyst and an accelerator to help create those sorts of partnerships. This is a very important, I also think that Beijing is going to pay a price for, for frankly, for its the way it ha has handled this crisis, both in terms of its delays and because of the the uh, the the, uh, the uh, lack of information. If I can describe it that way, I think it's very unfortunate that they did not allow 
uh, Taiwan to participate fully in, in, in global health institutions. It's lamentable, frankly. So uh, I think we have to work, our partner d democracies have to work together in this great t time of challenge. So I think there's some important platforms we can build on. Let me, Ambassador Yee, let me just say, I'm, I'm a great admirer of the, I think we need to think about what the future looks like because I'm worried about in places like Central America and places like Guatemala, the, the rule of thumb is we're going to see as much as a 5% hit to the GNP, the formal GNP in places like Central America. Ten, hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even millions of people in places like Mexico or Central America may be thrown out of work. So we need to be thinking about, as Pete S. Chung was talking about earlier, how do we restart the economy? And some of their, some examples of this that Pete S. Chung talked about, and you've talked about how do we restart the tourism sector. One of the things I want to flag is something that Taiwan has done really well and is something that you're sharing is the creative economy. You have a fabulous culture ministry. You have this very interesting fund. You're sharing it through your new southbound policy, primarily in Asia. But I think about a country like Guatemala or I think about uh, a country like Honduras or, or Belize or Haiti. Each of these countries has... When we talk about culture, it's sort of seen as, oh, that's kind of fluffy. But the creative economy includes many components. It includes tourism. It includes IT. It includes art and dance. It's actually quite a significant chunk of an economy, if I can describe it that way, and much bigger than people realize. So I think certainly there's tourism and IT, but also I think the creative economy is something where Taiwan is, is sharing a lot with Asia. And just like the GCTF being a platform in Asia, perhaps there are opportunities for Taiwan to share ideas about the creative economy. You see this in President Duque of Colombia wrote this book about the creative economy. So I just think there's an, a big opportunity there. Ambassador, you talk a little bit about economic, restarting the economy and, and various, you know, certainly other things you want to talk about about restarting the economy. And if you want to talk about the creative economy, that'd be welcome as well. Well, just uh, a follow-up on your ending uh, sentences where you mentioned uh, President Duque has, uh, had uh, written a book on the creative economy. I will welcome President Duque to visit Taiwan to learn to, to see what the creative economy in, in, in its actual work in, in Taiwan. But uh, as, as a matter of fact, as you mentioned and as PDS Chan mentioned about uh, the, the, the implementation of uh, Smart, smart technology uh, in, in our in our society. Uh, actually, we you, we 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 implemented that during our pandemic. We have a digital uh, uh, minister, uh, and she she uh, uh, designed and implemented some of the softwares or or apps that that we could use. For example, uh, we could uh, look from our our smartphone where 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 the nearest available. Uh, face mask selling points that I could mm. get to, you know, and then just by looking, you know, oh, there's still there's still three sets, so I can, you know, I am within three minutes walking distance, so I can get it before it's it's all sold out, uh, etc. So it, it helped us in in managing and 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 managing the the uncertainties that that, that we face when dealing with this pandemic, when, you know, the scarcity of, of face masks and whether I'll, I'll be able to get it today or not, etc. So this 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 is technology at work. During the pandemic, but also actually uh, uh, last year, end of last year, we sent out a, a, a delegation of uh, it's called Smart Solution uh, uh, businesses uh, to to Central America, including Guatemala. Uh, we talked about how we could use uh, a smart technology, smart uh, you know solutions to help in the development of of, uh, of of countries. Some are actually very simple ideas that actually it's it's readily it's not that high tech. People people think of smart cities, you know, like AI and all that, but but actually as simple as an app that can let you know when your next you know collected bus uh, will, will arrive at your bus station just by looking at your apps, oh okay the the next bus will come in you know five minutes. So I know how, how long before I, I have to stand by the bus stop to take my, my ride, uh, or uh, etc. You know, there are many many applications in in all sectors, whether it be agriculture, health, uh, you know, education, etc. So there are uh, many many ways that we can implement smart solutions, and and we were actually this year also preparing to send our second uh, delegation to Central America. 
Uh, we'll, we'll wait until it's appropriate to, to, to do that, but uh, it is already in the pipeworks that, that we share the technology that we have developed in Taiwan uh, and to do that with it. And also I wanted to add about what PDAS and Ambassador Kenyon had mentioned about BFC, uh, the, the America Crece initiative that was, uh, 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 that was mentioned by PDAS Chang. Uh, we also had uh, uh, mentioned uh, Announce our, our uh, uh, willingness to join efforts with the United States uh, to join efforts with uh, whether it be a DFC or even USAID in working together uh, with with the, the United States as a like-minded partner uh, uh, in in Latin America in our allied countries uh, to to uh, join efforts to to uh, uh, improve the livelihoods and improve the, uh, the the development of our allied countries. I think this will be more meaningful. Uh, Post, you know, pandemic, because this will be the implementation of creating new jobs, starting new infrastructures, or modifying uh, uh, society uh, mechanisms so that it can better handle uh, the, the new world that we will be facing after the pandemic. You know, I think all, all of that we are we're we're, we're very uh, uh, we've been actually talking about this also uh, with, with the U.S. So. Um, uh, yeah, Taiwan. Uh, you know, uh, you, some 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 of the you know uh, viewers in, in this uh, seminar may not know, but Taiwan during the whole pandemic, you know, crisis, we never had quarantine. Uh, the the new our world that we will be facing you know, after the our pandemic. Buses were running. I think all, all of that are, we are. You know, our, our we're, students we're are going very, to classes. Uh, uh, we've been actually talking open. about this also we, uh, implement with, with social the US. distancing. You know. So. Um, Stay away from each other. Uh, we yeah, have Taiwan all the time. Uh, you know, uh, but, uh, but society as a you, whole ran some, some, some of the, uh, as in during that and nowadays, now we're, we're easing the restrictions. Uh, we no longer, you know, have to have certain limitations when, for, for example, when we, we, when you rode the train or the bus, you had to have, uh, the, 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 the face mask. We still ask for that, but, but, but we're easing on, on, on those restrictions. Uh, so I, I would have, I, you know, once in a while I would send this picture of me in, in the, you know, uh, this very crowded market and to, to my friends in Latin America saying, here, here, we're, I'm in Taiwan, you know, enjoying this Sunday with full of people. It's, oh, you know. <laughs> lucky but, you. But, uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, but we, you know, we were lucky and we would like to, uh, keep, keep it, keep it that way, but also we're very willing to share our experiences with our friends. Also, besides, uh, besides having a medical personnel, uh, in, in those projects at, at the country, at the seven countries uh, that I mentioned, uh, we also have a series of, uh, 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 webinars, uh, from Taiwanese doctors in Taiwan with, with all, all of our allied countries in the region. To also uh, to to answer any doubts they had when they were dealing with the pandemic or some of this, what what are the solutions? What are the experiences? What are you know uh, what, what we can share with them uh, while they're with, while they're dealing with COVID nineteen? Hey, thanks, Ambassador. Okay, Ambassador Quinones, my question to you about the IDB. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Uh, this is very important, and and I think that should not be overlooked. Uh, this is uh, the most important election uh, in uh, the inter-American system that we are uh, that we have uh, ahead of us. Uh, we just recently uh, uh, we elected the Secretary General of the OAS, and this is the the, the next uh, very very important one. And I think that uh, we should put politics aside and be be practical in terms of uh, of, uh, of uh, participation of countries that can really provide uh, not just uh, 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 resources, uh, monetary resources, uh, but also uh, experiences. And 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 I don't see why. Taiwan could not be uh, a part of uh, uh, an active part of that uh, of that equation. So we need uh, a precedent uh, uh, for the IDV that recognizes this uh, this situation. Obviously, we know that it's not going to be um, easy. Uh, uh, let's just uh, recall what happened last year uh, on the annual meeting. Um, if I if my memory serves me well, uh, it was going to take place in 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 China and um, and uh, at the end it had to be canceled because of the issue of uh, of Venezuela and and I, I think that we also have to put uh, 
principles and values uh, uh, in front, issues of democracy, freedom of the press, uh, and all the different elements that uh, that uh, Dan mentioned at the, at, uh, at the beginning. So this election is key. And yes, uh, uh, by July, I think, uh, there yeah. have to be the... the the, the the candidates uh, uh, open and 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 we hope that uh, whoever gets to be uh, elected will recognize the value of having uh, uh, Taiwan uh, actively participate at the IDB. Great. I, unfortunately, I have to move to questions because I'd love to have this conversation among all of us. Um, the first question is from Richmond, Virginia. One of the reasons why Taiwan's been so successful is its robust and experienced science and technology communities. What can we do in the medium to long term for Latin America to enhance their own science and technology communities and bring them to similar standards? Maybe this is a question for all three of you. So, uh, Ambassador P. Des Chung, do you want to respond to that first? Well, I think, um, you know, as I mentioned, the innovation and the academic and scientific research that we are, we have been ongoing for years in the region, um, that can only become stronger and it's only more necessary right now. And so whatever form it is, whether it's through academic to academic exchanges uh, or through governments, um, that's where we need to look for those solutions. I would say we have a program in the Western Hemisphere called the 100,000 Strong, and that's where we actually match up and we get private sector donations to match up students uh, at the college and postgraduate level from universities in the United States and Latin America to come up with innovative solutions on whether that's on hygiene issues, water um, management issues, or health issues. And so we're looking to enhance these kinds of programs and enhance more of that academic to academic uh, best practices across the region. Great, thank you. Ambassador Yui, would you like to share about this? Sure. Um, as I mentioned before, we uh, in in the in the Americas within our allies, we already are implementing uh, seven uh, health programs. Mm. Uh, some are, for, for example, in Guatemala, we have the, the, the promotion of medical technology for the improvement of maternal neonatal health. Uh, we have one for kidney disease in Nicaragua from uh, strengthening medical imaging system in Belize, etc. There are several, but uh, what, one of the Programs, for example, it could be also as simple as just uh, 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 improving the, uh, the, the the infrastructure of the hospitals. For example, in, in Paraguay, where I serve as ambassador, we implemented the uh, modernization of their their uh, information systems of public hospitals. Basically, having a, a, a you know a computer system and and a, and a managing system for for the computers, where. Uh, uh, they used to, the patients used to have to come very, very early into the hospital, stay in line for, for maybe a couple of hours to be able to be attended by, by a doctor. Uh, everything was done by hand, by, by, by pencil, and the medical workers could be in, in different files, you know, according to how, how they wrote their name that day, you could be in a different, uh, you know, paper file. And, and everything was digitalized and it was very efficient. Uh, people were being attended by the doctors within, you know, maybe within an hour. And, and also the, the, the hospitals were able to uh, better manage their resources. For example, medicine, they, they didn't know where their aspirants were going you know, after they got it from Ministry of Health. But now with the system, they knew which doctor was you know, giving how many aspirants to which patients. So just 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 that itself, it's 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 an improvement of, of the medical system. Uh, as also may, may some of you may know, Taiwan has has a, a very comprehensive uh, universal health system in Taiwan. Uh, over 99 percent of our population is covered by this universal health system, and also we uh, uh, are happy to share the experiences we had on implementing this uh, national health system. At the same time, uh, work together with like-minded countries like the United States. Uh, in other countries uh, to, to work together. Uh, we've also been uh, talking about uh, building uh, hospitals. I think we're, we're in the process of talking with Guatemala, for example, in, in improving some of their hospital system, the hospitals infrastructure, or even building new hospitals uh, with the President Jamate. And, uh, and with the United States, we've also had uh, a series of, uh, of, of uh, uh, Approaches uh, where where we uh, work together. For example, I, I'm reading this material that we have that I have on um, on March the 18th. Uh, we had a joint declaration between Taiwan and the United States on 
uh, as a partnership to uh, attack or the, to, 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 to counter the, the COVID-19 uh, between our two countries. We are working together on, on vaccine production. Uh, a company called Medigen and our, our National Institute of Health were working together for the development of vaccine. We're working with uh, a U.S. company called Gilead Science. Uh, you know, they're the they're makers of the Remdesivir uh, the medicine that is that, the, and, and working with our, our hospitals to to uh, to develop this this medical treatment for for the for the COVID nineteen etc. Uh, our our ministers of health, Minister Chen and Minister or Secretary Azar, had a, a conference teleconference in back in April to talk about working together, uh, uh, not just between our two, ourselves but also w with other countries. On, w, uh, on, on this issue and also on working together on, on our participation in WHO and, and others, right? But uh, we're, we're a willing partner and we're also we're a very dependable partner. Uh, as uh, PDAS Chang also mentioned, uh, sometimes uh, Beijing is not very, uh, they, they like sometimes to exaggerate and also hide, to hide some facts. And they, they, they promise a lot, deliver not, not, not that much. But Taiwan is a very reliable partner. We do what we say. So we, we are here and ready to help our friends. Ambassador can you ask this question about increasing science and technology capacity in, in places like Guatemala? Uh, very briefly. And, uh, you know, uh, Ambassador uh, Yui mentioned uh, um, uh, that uh, Taiwan has been lucky. And, and, and I, I beg to, to the fair. Uh, and, and if I may uh, 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 say that uh, uh, you you may have been lucky, but you have been prepared, uh, and you have been preparing, and and you have been investing uh, um, on 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 all these different uh, elements that, that that were raised uh, raised here. So so I I beg to defer. You were not lucky. You were uh, ready. You were you you were prepared, and I think that is very important. Because it is not that you are just like that, but you are willing uh, to share that experience with uh, uh, with the world, which I think is very important. Uh, you are a very generous country, uh, and 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 we he, in Guatemala we have benefited uh, from that uh, uh, generosity, and and I think that more countries in the world can also benefit uh, uh, from that, especially on this uh, uh, from that uh, that. Uh, uh, we are we are discussing discussing today, as Dan uh, mentioned uh, at some point. Uh, perhaps the question is not uh, if there will be another pandemic, but when there will be another another pandemic. So we have to be ready, and all these elements of uh, uh, technology, uh, of uh, preparedness, uh, readiness, uh, have to be uh, put in place. Uh, I, I think that this this is a wake up call for all of us, and 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 I think that. Uh, in that wake up call, uh, we have to put politics aside and be more practical and, 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 and help each other in, in not just weathering this, uh, the, the, this situation, but also being ready for the next, uh, uh brunt that, uh, we may have of, on, on, on situations like, like, uh, like this. Well, I have one last question for the three of you. Uh, the COVID has forced many people to f realize that in the last 20 weeks, there's been much more fo uh, progress on e-commerce and distance learning than in the last 20 years in Latin America and elsewhere. So at the same time, how do we ensure that we have the use of secure technologies? How do we ensure that countries like Guatemala and then, frankly, the rest of Latin America don't go down the path of choosing Huawei uh, or other questionable technological brands as it, as it's forced to adopt or has to adopt. So let me start with you, Ambassador Quinones, and then I'll ask Ambassador Yui and Pete S. Chung. You know, you, you raise a very important, uh, uh, important issue and, and, and how the role of technology plays in, in the developing of, uh, of countries. Uh, I think that we could not be and should not be, uh, putting aside the possibilities of of of, uh, of of getting into the next level as a country uh, uh, by 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 not 
uh, investing in, in in technology. But I think it has to be the right the right technology uh, in order for us as countries and as individuals, either uh, in in education or or in the in the in the in the business in the business sector to to get the uh, to get the best. Uh, and for that, we we need to have the security, the privacy uh, uh, on on and the, the assurances that uh, uh, the the way we are um, working with uh, this. Uh, uh, technologies, uh, communication technologies, uh, is, uh, is 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 secured. Um, I think that uh, it's the way of the future. Uh, this, if if this pandemic has brought something positive, is the fact that we could do what we are doing this uh, uh, this morning. Uh, uh, Ambassador Yu is in in, in Taiwan. Uh, uh, Julie is uh, uh, here, a couple of mice, miles from uh, from me. Uh, I could have been in Guatemala having this uh, this uh, the, 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 this conversation, but it's important that this be secured. Uh, so uh, I look forward to to um, getting um, support for this uh, kind of uh, situations in in uh, this kind of uh, technology in, in in Guatemala, so we can get into the next level. Great, Ambassador Yui. Yeah, well, one of the advantages of. Uh us being uh, not not in not so friendly terms with mainland China is that uh, our uh, telecom systems, including our 5G systems uh, that we have uh, we have uh, we, we have implemented in Taiwan, are all uh, free of PRC materials and PRC uh, software. Uh, we're clean, so uh, we're also very uh, willing and happy to to. Uh, to advise and share our experiences with other countries on how to implement uh, a, a 5G or a telecom system that is free of, of this uh, uh, wishy or iffy or doubtful uh, 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 technology that, that may intrude in your privacy. Or even, uh, as uh, may, some of you may have, may have read uh, today or yesterday about Zoom, you know, that they, they have been uh, uh, censoring uh, certain users because what they were talking were against PRC, uh, you know, PRC, uh, they, they didn't like it. So they, the PRC government asked Zoom, said, well, take those away. So we, 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 we strive to work in an environment that is free of those censorships. We work with uh, lo- f- f- uh, democracy and, and, and loving countries. Also, uh, as we also mentioned earlier in, in this, uh, in this session that, uh, we, could uh, we're actually planning on um, with the United States to uh, to have our first uh, GCTF seminar uh, probably in Guatemala and actually the topic will be on uh, you know e-commerce and also uh, as a personal uh, experience uh, during this pandemic you know this we try to stay away from you know from from people and etc. Uh, nowadays it's very uh, I, I learned to use uh, uh, Uber Eats and Food Panda, <laughs> and that's that's part of a learning process. <laughs> but it works, and it's very convenient. Great, Pete asked Chang, you get the last word. Thanks. I think it all goes back to accountability and reliability. Let me go back to a moment on the IDB meeting of last year when they were going to host it in Chengdu. Uh, not only did the CCP uh, decided not to invite. Um, the Taiwan, who is an observer, but they decided not to invite, of course, President, interim President Guaido's representative of a democratic Venezuela. So the members, uh, spoke back and said, why does Beijing get to dictate these rules, uh, these rules that are transparent and long, uh, living? So I think, again, that is just one example, and the World Health Assembly is another example where we as a democratic community should be able to work together, again, as Ambassador Quinona says, um, come up with practical solutions using the best resources and the best practices. So when it comes to technology and things like Huawei, I think the same thing applies. Who are the reliable partners that can be accountable? And it's not, it goes beyond personal data privacy. This affects national security. So whatever information that is put into the pipelines of Huawei goes straight to the CCP and it is not independent uh, of the government of China. So I think when we look at, again, anything to do with uh, technology especially, but even global pandemic issues or infrastructure or procurement, everything has to go back to accountability and transparency. And that's where we look forward to working with our democratic partners. 
Thank you, everybody. This has been great. I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope to do this again sometime soon. Thanks all very much. Thank you.